responsibility lies on the shoulders of one man. By his latest act of naked aggression, Hitler has committed a crime not only against Poland, but against the whole human race. Against the mothers and children leaving the city. When the world was torn in the midst of a war and India was under colonial rule of the British, the only thing synonymous with transport in the country was railways. Personal transportation back then could only be afforded by the elite or by the British. This created a void and the need for an affordable vehicle that was meant to put the common man on four wheels paved the way for Hindustan motors and changed the way Indians travelled forever. Hindustan Motors Limited was established during the Second World War in 1942 by industrialist B. M. Birla in a joint collaboration with Lord Newfield of Morris Motors who already had a history of selling their cars in the Indian market. The new plant in Port Okra in Gujarat commenced operations that year as a small assembly plant for manufacturing passenger cars. The first product that rolled out of the plant was named the Landmaster which was essentially an Indian version of the Morris Oxford. The car came equipped with a petrol powered 1.5 litre 4 cylinder side valve engine that produced 50 horsepower and 104 Nm torque. It competed with the Fiat 1100 Millicento which was imported into the Indian market at that time. After a taste of sweet success, Hindustan Motors made a few units of Landmaster Traveller Wagon which were a station wagon with a turncoat wooden body and rear barn type doors. After the World War was over and India had gained independence, manufacturing facility later moved to Uttarpara, West Bengal in 1948. The first car to roll out of the new plant was the Hindustan 10. Based on the Morris 10 Series M car, it came with a 1.1 litre overhead valve engine which produced an output of 37.2 bhp and delivered 10 horsepower to the wheels, hence the name Hindustan 10. What followed was a host of products like the Hindustan 14 based on the Morris 14 and Baby Hindustan derived from the Morris Minor. The Hindustan 14 had a 1.4 litre petrol powered engine that produced 41 horsepower and 91 Nm torque. The Hindustan 10 and the Hindustan 14 with its British charm were the pinnacle of luxury in the 50s. But due to low demand, Hindustan Motors produced few of these cars and they have become a rare sight these days. The baby Hindustan on the other hand was a very compact car that had lot less leg space than its predecessors. The company later decided to produce a few models with spacious interiors but then returned to the original compactness they were known for. In 1957, the company launched the iconic Ambassador based on the Morris Oxford Series 3 and its first model was dubbed as the Ambassador Mark I. Its 1.5 litre side valve straight 4 diesel engine was derived from the Landmaster and was used for the Mark I models. The car had a semi monocoque design which was quite an advancement in vehicle engineering in the 50s. It was designed by Alec Isigonis, whose other notable designs were the Mini and the Morris Minor. The Ambassador gained popularity as it was fondly called the King of Indian Roads. The government policies promoting local car companies and political influence of the Birlas kept other companies from entering the Indian market, which meant Hindustan Motors had the monopoly in the Indian car market for several decades. The company entered into a collaboration agreement with General Motors in 1967 for manufacturing earth-moving equipments at a new plant in Tiruvallur, Tamil Nadu from 1971. The agreement with General Motors turned out to be fruitful as Hindustan Motors made a deal to produce Bedford trucks from 1980 to 1990 for Vauxhall Motors which was then owned by General Motors. They went on to form a collaboration with Isuzu in 1982 to assemble and sell the Isuzu F-Series JCS trucks in India. By this time the ambassador had become an icon in India and was the most preferred car by government officials and bureaucrats alike. 
But all of this was about to change with the rise of Maruti Udyog in 1981. The government had long favored the monopoly of Hindustan Motors in the market, but change in policies back then called for a shift in the way the industry worked. Hence Maruti Udyog was formed by the government of India only to be merged with Suzuki in 1982. The joint venture later came to be known as Maruti Suzuki which would turn the tides on Hindustan Motors. The government had finally opened doors for global manufacturers to enter the Indian market. Maruti Suzuki created waves in the market with the new age engines from Suzuki while on the other hand HM still used the age old engines from the 50s. Maruti Suzuki had made a name for themselves right from the first model. the 800 hm had long been relying on the government to favor them and this time it was no different in 1983 the government approved the company's proposal to increase the production capacity of passenger cars to 50000 units per year a state of the art engine plant was built in pitampur madhya pradesh for the commencement and production of a new model in the making The Contessa launched in 1984 in a bid to outdo its competition. Fondly remembered as the muscle car of India, it was based on a Vauxhall VX series in the 70s, powered by a 1.5 liter BMC B series engine with a four-speed gearbox that produced 50 horsepower. The joint venture with Isuzu later turned into a technical collaboration when Hindustan Motors used Isuzu's 1.8 liter petrol engine with a 5-speed gearbox for the Contessa which produced 88 PS peak power. They also added the 2-liter Isuzu diesel engine to the production line to power the Contessa. It was appreciated for its plush ride and the diesel model was a huge hit. But with the introduction of modern day cars from Tata, Ford, Fiat and General Motors, the appeal of the Contessa was soon fading out and it seemed that the reign of Hindustan Motors was coming to an end. General Motors formed a joint venture with Hindustan Motors in 1994 to form General Motors India to produce the Astra and Corsa models for the Opel brand. They used HM's manufacturing facilities until 1999 when they bought the Gujarat plant and ended the partnership with HM to go their separate ways. In 1998, Hindustan Motors entered into a joint collaboration with Mitsubishi to manufacture the Pajero, Lancer and Outlander models till early 2010. Hindustan Motors was the first company to introduce SUVs in the Indian market through Mitsubishi. But as sales dwindled, Mitsubishi couldn't taste success in India. which added much woe to HM's already falling sales. The Contessa was phased out in 2002 due to poor sales and stiff competition from rivals. But the final nail in the coffin was hit when Hindustan decided to discontinue its ambassador in 2014. It was a swan song for the homegrown manufacturer as Hindustan Motors bid goodbye to the ambassador the car that once brought the company to its glory days but how did a manufacturer which began its roots before independence and a history spanning 7 decades meet its demise hindustan motors made a name for themselves with the government backing them and with a brief venture with morris motors but while certain policies promoting made in india initiative during the british era put them on the top spot HM got too comfortable as there was no other manufacturer to challenge them. A few years after merging into British Motor Corporation, Morris Motors sold the rights of the Ambassador model to Hindustan Motors. Hindustan kept manufacturing the Ambassador unchanged for several decades until other manufacturers came to the fore. HM was reluctant to change in a world which was ever changing. By the time Ambassador was discontinued, It was already the longest running model in the world spanning almost 56 years. That is a milestone very few car manufacturers can achieve. 
The rights for the Ambassador model were sold to Peugeot in 2017. Hindustan Motors might no longer produce its own models, but it still manufactures cars for Isuzu and Mitsubishi till this day. The name Hindustan Motors would be etched forever in the books of history that once used to be an iconic car manufacturer in its own right.